This video is about rational functions and end behavior. This is AP Precalculus Topic 1.7. If you appreciate this content, please don't forget to hit that like button. A rational function is simply the quotient of two polynomials. So a polynomial divided by another polynomial. Y is a rational function if it can be written as f of x over g of x, where f of x and g of x are both polynomials, and of course g cannot equal zero. You can't divide by zero. Here are a few examples of rational functions. The end behavior of a rational function is determined by the leading terms of the numerator and the denominator. There are three cases, and to explore those cases, Let's use the model function f of x, where the leading term of the numerator is ax to the n power, and the leading term of the denominator is bx to the d power. Case one, if the leading terms have the same degree, in other words, n equals d, then f of x has a horizontal asymptote, y equals a over b. We're dividing by the leading coefficients, and that's going to give you the end behavior. To understand why case one makes sense, consider rational function g of x that I just made up. The right end behavior will be the limit as x approaches infinity of g of x. But as x approaches infinity, only the highest degree terms will matter. In other words, the right end behavior will be the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x squared over 4x squared. But at this point, the x squared and the x squared will cancel each other out, and we're left with the limit as x approaches infinity of 2 over 4, which simply equals 1 half. The limit of a constant is just that constant. So as x approaches infinity, the value of g of x approaches 1 half. This is the horizontal asymptote described in case 1. Case 2. If the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator, then f of x has a horizontal asymptote y equals zero. Consider rational function h of x to illustrate case two. The denominator has a higher degree. Again, the right end behavior is the limit as x approaches infinity of h of x, and that will be determined completely by the highest degree term in the numerator and the denominator. So the right end behavior will be the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x squared over 4x to the third power. Simplifying, we find that the right end behavior is the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over 2x. Now think about what happens to the value of this expression as x approaches infinity. x is in the denominator, so as x gets bigger and bigger, we're going to have 1 over 20, 1 over 200, 1 over 2,000, 1 over 2 million. So the overall value of this fraction is getting closer and closer to zero, and that is the limit. So that's why in case two, we, we get a horizontal asymptote y equals zero. By the way, I keep using the limit as x approaches infinity, the right end behavior. But the argument for the left end behavior, x approaches negative infinity, would be identical. By the way, I'm showing you these examples to illustrate that you don't actually have to memorize these cases. You're free to memorize them if you want to, but if you forget the cases, you can just do a quick example like I'm doing and discover the answer for yourself. Case three. If the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator, then f of x will have the end behavior of the polynomial y equals the quotient of the leading coefficients times x to the n minus d power, where n minus d is the degree of the numerator minus the degree of the denominator. By the way, if the degree of the numerator is exactly one more than the degree of the denominator, then f of x has a slant asymptote, uh, sometimes called an oblique asymptote. That's where the asymptote is a diagonal line. To explore case three, consider the rational function j of x equals all of this. 
The right end behavior is the limit as x approaches infinity of j of x. And as x approaches infinity, only the highest degree terms matter. So that right end behavior will equal the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x to the third power divided by 4x squared. Simplifying, we get the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 half x. As x approaches infinity, this expression will get bigger and bigger and bigger. So this limit is infinity. So this is the right end behavior of j of x. But more specifically, j of x is approaching the line y equals 1 half x. This is the slant asymptote that we were talking about. For case three, the left end behavior and the right end behavior are not the same. So let's consider the limit as x approaches negative infinity of j of x, the left end behavior. So still only the highest degree terms will matter. So the left end behavior will equal the limit as x approaches negative infinity of two x to the third power over four x squared. This simplifies down to the limit as x approaches negative infinity of one half x. Remember how the right end behavior was positive infinity? Well, this will be different because x is approaching negative infinity, meaning that these x values will always be negative numbers like negative 100, negative 1000, negative a million. Therefore, the value of j of x, which is just one half of x, will always be negative. In other words, the left end behavior is negative infinity. But still, j of x is approaching this slant asymptote y equals one half x. It's just that this diagonal line, one half x, is approaching positive infinity on the right and negative infinity on the left. Example one, determine if the following rational functions have a horizontal asymptote, slant asymptote, or neither. If the function has a horizontal asymptote, write the equation of the asymptote. For part A, we notice that the degree of the numerator and the denominator are the same. This gives us a horizontal asymptote of y equals three-fifths because the x squared will just cancel out. In part b, the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator. This means we will have a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. This is because the right end behavior is the limit as x approaches infinity of two x over x squared which simplifies to two over x. And as x approaches infinity, the denominator is getting bigger and bigger, so the overall value of the fraction is getting smaller and smaller, closer and closer to zero. I don't know if those abbreviations are accepted by the college board, so let's play it safe and say horizontal asymptote. Let's write it out. In part C, the degree of the numerator is bigger. This means there will not be a horizontal asymptote. However, there will be a slant asymptote because the numerator degree is exactly one more than the denominator. In other words, just imagine simplifying this yellow expression down. It would become two fifths x. When you get just an x like this, when you simplify, that's when you have a slant asymptote. For part D, the degrees are the same. So we will have a horizontal asymptote at y equals one half. Just imagine simplifying this down, the x's cancel out and you are left with one half. For part E, don't forget that a constant is degree zero. This is like three x to the zero power. So the degree of the denominator is definitely bigger. We will have a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. This is because the right end behavior is the limit as x approaches infinity of three over x squared. As x squared gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the overall value of the fraction is approaching zero. In part F, the degree of the denominator is bigger because we have another degree zero in the top. And we have another horizontal asymptote, y equals zero. 
because the limit as x approaches infinity of negative 4 over 2x simplifies to the limit as x approaches infinity of negative 2 over x. And as x approaches infinity, this expression gets closer and closer to 0. Example 2. Write limit statements to describe the end behavior of the following rational functions. For part A, the degree of the numerator and denominator are the same. At the extremes, these are the only terms that matter. Notice that the x to the third power will cancel out from the numerator and the denominator, leaving us with 2 over 6, which simplifies down to 1 third. In other words, we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1 third. That gives us the left and right end behavior. The left end behavior equals 1 third, and the right end behavior equals 1 third. In part b, the degree of the denominator is bigger. We will end up with a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0 because of the way this simplifies down to 5 over 2x. And as x approaches infinity, the denominator is getting bigger and bigger. The overall value of this expression is getting closer and closer to 0. So the left end behavior and the right end behavior are both 0. In part c, the degree of the numerator is bigger. So there is no horizontal asymptote. I'm going to do the right end behavior first. I'm going to write out all the steps, but you can probably do this in your head. So the right end behavior will be the limit as x approaches infinity of negative 3x to the fourth power over x to the third power, just the highest degree terms. This simplifies to the limit as x approaches infinity of negative 3x. Remember that x will be a positive number as x approaches positive infinity. So we have negative 3 times a large positive number. So the right end behavior is negative infinity. If it helps, think negative 3 times infinity is negative infinity. But don't write it down anywhere because this is bad math, unacceptable. Uh, infinity is not a number, it can't be multiplied. Again, the answer is that the right end behavior is negative infinity. Notice that I'm using the word is and not an equal sign. Because infinity is not a number, it's not appropriate to say that the limit equals infinity. We save that equal sign for numbers. It is appropriate to say that the limit is negative infinity. Now let's do the left end behavior, which will simplify down like this. But this time, the limit is positive infinity because as x approaches negative infinity, these x values are negative numbers. So we have a negative times a negative, which is a positive. If it helps, think negative 3 times negative infinity is positive infinity. But don't ever write it down. Oops, I just realized I made a small mistake. When I wrote the right in behavior, I left out the h of x. Very important. Without the h of x, it is improper notation and you will lose points. For part d, they gave us a graph. So it's very easy to see that y is approaching 2 on the left and 2 on the right. So there's your left end behavior and the right end behavior. Glancing ahead at part e, Again, we are given the graph, I see a horizontal asymptote here at negative 1. So on the ends, the function is approaching negative 1 on the left, and it's approaching negative 1 on the right. So there's your left end behavior and your right end behavior. Remember, if the degree of the numerator is exactly one more than the denominator, then f of x will have a slant asymptote parallel to the line y equals a over bx, where a and b are the leading coefficients. Example 3. Which of the following rational functions has a slant asymptote parallel to the line 1 over 2x? All of these functions have leading coefficients of 1 over 2. That matches the leading coefficient of the slant asymptote. So far, so good. However, you only get a slant asymptote when the degree of the numerator is exactly one more than the degree of the denominator. 
These degrees are equal, so it's not going to be Roman numeral 1. No slant asymptote. For uh, g of x, the degree of the denominator is 0. That's going to give us a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0, so that's not going to be it. Uh, for function h of x, the degree of the numerator is 2, compared to the denominator has degree 1. So we will have a slant asymptote here. And uh, for the last one, the degree of the numerator is more than the denominator, but it's not exactly one more. It's two more. So that does not give us a slant asymptote either. So the answer is C. Three only. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. But also, if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.